In this video, we're going to discuss a quick way to measure real gain and leak from a batch of germanium transistors. So let's go to the bench and check it out. So here we have a quick Arduino Uno project. We're going to use this little setup here to measure the gain, the true gain, and the leak of our germanium transistors. So I have a PNP germanium transistor here, a 2N404A. We just hit the reset button. And it can tell me right there that the gain is around 35 HFE and our leak is around 104 microamps. Now as the temperature fluctuates, obviously these things fluctuate a little bit with it. But if you want to check again, press the reset button on your Arduino Nano and it refreshes. Let's take this guy out and put in an NPN germanium transistor, a 2N229. This uh, breadboard layout here is, we're going for EBC for pins, so emitter base collector. Throw that in there, press the button, and there we go. Now it's knowing that it's an NPN transistor, gives me the gain and the appropriate leak. And I can even go so far as to put in an NPN silicon transistor like this 2N3904. And we'll get our gain off of that. Now, that gain's pretty close, pretty much spot on. The leak is going to show a little bit of something there just because there's a bit of jitter on the Arduino Uno. You can tell that by having nothing put in there. And you can see we got a minimal leak there. But that aside, this is good enough to do the business. Let's take a look and see how the circuit's working from a schematic and a code perspective. So here we have a schematic for what I laid out on my breadboard. We have our three modular circuits, one being the Arduino Nano, which is just a regular Arduino Uno in a smaller footprint running at 5 volts. And we have our SSD 1306 OLED display set up to use 5 volts over I squared C. I'm using the older 8 pin version that requires a reset pin dedicated to it, but the newer ones that are specific to I squared C only have 4 pins being a power, a ground, a data, and a clock. Using the four pin displays will work in this setup as well. You just don't need to connect that OLED reset wire and everything should work fine. The last part that I have in here is the ADS-1115 module. This is a 16-bit resolution ADC that also communicates over I squared C. Because we are measuring differences in low voltage, we do need this level of accuracy that that built-in 8-bit resolution built into the Arduino Nano can't do. All three of these modules I got off of Amazon and they're all rather inexpensive. I'll have links for these in the description below. Other com components here that we have are the two capacitors which I use for basic power filtering. Uh, nothing too precise. And then we have these two resistors right here. Uh, the values for these resistors are relatively important. But inside the code, you'll notice a place where you can input the true values of these resistors so that all of our calculations come up relatively accurate. So, how does this work? So, when the Arduino powers up, it'll do its setup, and then it will go to the transistor's emitter pin and apply it to ground, and it'll go to the base pin and apply 5 volts to it. Then it will check the collector pin and see if there's voltage across it. If there is voltage on the collector pin, we know we have a PNP germanium transistor. If it doesn't see voltage on the other side here on the collector pin, we have an NPN germanium transistor or even an NPN silicon transistor. So now that we know if we have an NPN or PNP transistor, we can check for leakage coming off this transistor. We've demonstrated how to do this in previous videos with the multimeter, which in turn is covered by RG Keen's documentation on his site, which I'll provide a link in the description below for. But the idea, depending on if the transistor is NPN or PNP, this will determine which legs of the transistors we apply 5 volts and ground to. If it's an NPN transistor, I'll apply ground to the emitter pin. If it's PNP, I'll apply 5 volts to the emitter pin. Then it applies the opposite to the collector resistor. So if it was NPN and we put ground to the emitter pin, uh, we'll put 5 volts here on the collector resistor. And if it was a PNP transistor, uh, where I applied 5 volts to the emitter pin, I'll put ground over here on the collector resistor. The base pin will be left floating. Now we can take a measurement of voltage coming off the collector pin of the transistor if it's PNP, 
or get the voltages from the 5 volt rail minus the voltage coming off the collector pin if it's NPN. And from that, we can get leakage current. We get the leakage current by using Ohm's law because voltage over resistance equals current and we know the resistance of the current resistor and we just got the measured voltage coming off of the collector pin, we can solve for current and hopefully it's in a value in microamps. For example, if we measured 100 millivolts over the collector resistor and we have a perfect 100 ohm collector resistor, 100 millivolts over 100 or over 1000 ohms equals 100 microamps of leakage current. This is important because the leakage is what makes a little bit of that scratchiness appears on the pedal, especially when you're not playing anything. So that's kind of important to have as little of that as possible. Um, anything under 200 microamps is pretty good. Um, anything that's between like 200 to 300 is tolerable if you have to. And anything at over like 300 microamps, that's when you're starting to get into the point of like not wanting to even use that transistor. It's too noisy. Uh, so leakage is important to know about. And so now that we have the leakage voltage and the leakage current, uh, the leakage voltage being what we were getting over the collector resistor here when we had the base pin left floating. Uh, now we can apply a little current to the base pin of the transistor and, and measure its gain. So this is where the 1.2 mega ohm resistor is needed, but you can get away with a 1 mega ohm resistor. Just make sure that the code reflects that. Um, the amount of current applied to the base pin will be rail voltage divided by the base resistor which again is Ohm's law, and that will give us a predictable value of current being applied to the base. So if using 5 volts and a 1.2 mega ohm resistor, we're looking at around 4 microamps of base current. Now that we have a little current going into the base pin of the transistor, we can look at the voltages on the collector pin and calculate the gain. Gain is collector voltage divided by collector resistance divided by the base current. So now we're gonna to have to do a little bit of math. If we took a measurement of the collector resistor after we applied that four microamps to the base pin and we got a reading of 750 millivolts and we're using a 1K collector resistor here, our calculation would look like this. Gain is equal to 750 millivolts divided by a thousand. That way we can bring it up to volts. Then we divide that by a thousand ohms and then we divide that by four microamps divided by a million. That way the microamps is now in regular amps. And that will give us a equation of gain equals 0 0.75 volts divided by a thousand ohms divided by 0 0.000004 amps, which is a gain of 187.5. However, this isn't the true story. The leakage voltage also goes over the collector resistor. So we must subtract the leakage voltage from the current voltage. So if we had a leakage voltage of 100 millivolts like we mentioned earlier, we don't actually have 750 millivolts of gain on the collector. What we have is 750 minus 100. So we actually have 600 millivolts of true gain. So our calculation for gain now would be 0 0.65 volts over 1000 ohms over 0 0.000004 amps, which gives us a gain of 162.5. Now that we know all this, we can send this information out the Arduino serial monitor and then also out to the OLED display, and that can tell us you know, the things that we know now, which is the type of transistor, whether it's NPN or PNP, the leakage current, and the true gain measured on the transistor. And then at the very end of this, we can have these pins disconnect from voltage and ground, completely disconnecting the transistor from the circuit. And if you want to take another measurement, you just simply press the reset button on the Arduino and it'll take a new one. As of the actual Arduino code, I will put that up on my GitHub for free for anyone who wants to use it. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the description below. So with that, now you can purchase germanium transistors and know what you're getting once you get them in your hands. We offer a lot of germanium transistors on our site, so head on over and get some while we still have them. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. 
If you want to help support us, please visit our store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and check out our parts, PCBs, and kits, as that will help us out a lot. So as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.